Today I would like to talk to you about a common occurrence, something I called a mixed phone kick or a hybrid phone kick. Hybrid phone kick is a combination of a snap phone kick or a regular phone kick and a push phone kick or a push kick. Okay? Most people are familiar with two variations. The regular phone kick, once the chamber comes up, this part of the leg becomes mobilized and a kick comes out. The push phone kick, the chamber comes up a little bit higher and there's a push from the hip and from the knee. So the chamber comes up a little bit higher, push from the hip and from the knee. Okay? So in most martial arts schools, both kicks are taught. First, the snap phone kick is taught and then the push phone kick. Usually they both perform with the rear leg, sometimes with the front leg. Now, in real life, if you break down the kick, what most people are going to perform is a combination of the two kicks, not just one kick. Okay? So, I'm going to demonstrate it on the target here to show you what I mean. What most people would do when actually hitting a the target, they would bring up a chamber, throw a kick as a snap kick, and then when it's next to the target, they would push forward. Okay? So it begins as a snap phone kick, and then a few inches close to the target, or actually touching the target, it pushes in as a push kick. Okay? Now, one more time. Up, forward. Now, from here you're going to see that the hip is going to extend because the knee is going to drop down. From here to here, it's only extension of the knee. But from here and forward, it's also extension of the hip. Okay, now why does this happen? Okay, in order to throw a true push kick, you need to have a pretty high chamber. Okay, and most people do not have enough flexibility in the glutes, in the size, sometimes even hamstring, sometimes in enough flexibility in the supporting leg. And very often people do not have enough strength and endurance in a hip flexor to actually bring up a high chamber to throw a true push kick. Okay? So it's easier to bring up a slightly lower chamber and then throw a snap phone kick. Okay? However, if you throw a snap phone kick against the surface, especially at your own hip or abdominal level, if you throw a snap phone kick, it's just going to go up. Okay, remember it travels in an arc. So here, I'm throwing a kick. It's not going to go straight into the target, it's going to travel up. Okay, so it's not going to be any force. If you throw a low snap phone kick, then there will be force. If you try to throw it a little bit higher to the abdomen or hip level, then you have to extend the kick forward. Now, once again, it's very difficult to bring up a high chamber and then push. So most people bring up a little bit lower chamber, extend, and then push forward. Okay? So, through the target, I have paper here, it looks like this. Up, out, just from the knee, and then boom, push forward. So, it's really about half a foot or so over the push. Okay? Now, that's good, bad, different. Well, it's a useful adoption. Okay? It's a useful adoption to the movement. You do not have to lift a high chamber at the same time. You get the power of the push kick. And once the kick pushes, the hip flexor no longer has to stabilize. Because the hip flexor will have to stabilize a pretty high kick. Right? The hip flexor no longer has to stabilize. That's one. And two, you do not have to have the flexibility of the hamstring. Because to extend the kick here doesn't take as much flexibility as to extend the kick there. Okay? So, less flexibility is required, less hip flexor strength is required. And, because you push at the final moment, not only with your quadricep by extending the knee, but you also push with the back of the body, the posterior chain, you also use more muscles to push. There's a couple of drawbacks.